How could light be blocked without a physical cover? Could a book page be flattened without applying pressure? Is it possible to make a camera see through a finger? Is there a way to activate a switch without touching it? Those were the intriguing questions that flashed through our minds back in the middle of 2010. These are typical book scanners of that era, complete with overhead covers, V cradles, glass platens, and shutter releases. We wanted to replace them with something like this. One might think, it's just a camera on a stand. How difficult could that be? It took us eight years. When subjected to ambient light, whether natural or indoor, the images we got were deeply tainted by glares, shadows, and coloration. We assumed that software methods could provide some meaningful remedy. But we were so wrong. Glares turned out to be washed out empty patches that couldn't be recovered. Shadows were deeply integrated with content and were virtually inseparable. Any attempt to correct the colors in certain areas would only corrupt those in others. For a moment, we had only two options, build a cover or live with scans like these. Then we got a hint from an unexpected source, basic photography. Any experienced photographer could tell you that the photo on the left is a poor shot with excessive flash. It is bad because it has very little background details, or in other words, it lacked ambient light. Even though it's undesirable for photography, we wondered what it would do to document scanning. However, a conventional camera and flash yielded terrible results because they were not designed for capturing documents. To perform a proper test, we decided to use one of our working prototypes. We custom made a super fast mechanical shutter and a miniature flash module with an extra wide exposure coverage. The plan was to let the shutter be closed except for a thousandth of a second, blocking most of the ambient light. Working in conjunction was a tightly synchronized burst of flash that illuminated the page before passing through the open shutter and reaching the image sensor. When the parts were ready, we were anxious to test them out. At first, they didn't seem to make much of a difference, but as we increased the shutter speed and flash power, those stubborn artifacts magically disappeared from the scans. What we found was an invisible cover for our scanner. It was a eureka moment. With advancements in computing, it became possible to leave book pages in their naturally warped condition and get flat-looking scans. This could be achieved by digitally remapping each image pixel using software algorithms. However, the real challenge was not the mapping process. 
what no one had done before was finding the perfect page profile, which comprises the exact amount of correction to apply at every page location. The most common way used by typical software was to make use of page content to estimate its profile. But it won't work for pages that contain insufficient text sentences or straight lines. A possible solution was to compensate for the lack of such content by projecting bright lines onto every page while scanning. But the results were not what we expected. They came out far from perfect. There were remnants of page curvature that stood out when pages were magnified enough for comfortable reading. Much was left to be desired. But where did these errors come from? It turned out that book pages not only warp in the horizontal dimension, but also in several other ways. But the projected lines were only able to reveal the lateral profile. Another serious drawback was that it required two captures per scan, one with the projection and the other without. This added a delay that would not only double the scanning time, but also frustrate and confuse a user during capture. Since it degraded all three of our design priorities, namely image quality, performance, and usability, we had to look for another solution. What ensued were several months of examining thousands of images of open books. We wanted to understand and hopefully correlate every minute detail that could be extracted from the images. That turned out to be fruitful. Certain contours, shapes, and shades do contain some information about how a page warps in all the different dimensions. We incrementally applied what we learned, and text sentences began to straighten. Shapes and graphics started looking more like their originals. But somehow, certain scans still don't seem quite flat. What remained were these variations in brightness, which directly resulted from the physical page curvature. A crude way of eliminating them was by just brightening the whole image, but content would also be destroyed. To preserve content, varying amounts of compensation needed to be applied at different locations. We manually tested it using a powerful image editing tool called Photoshop. We theorized that better results could be obtained by letting the algorithm calculate the exact amount of compensation by a nonlinear correlation with the predetermined page profile. Our guess was right. Not only did it improve, it became perfect. Most book pages do not stay open by themselves, especially at the front and back. When that happens, anyone's intuition would be to hold them by the page edges. But images of fingers would then appear within scans.
we wondered if they could be automatically detected and digitally erased by a software algorithm. Replacing a portion of an image was relatively straightforward. The unexpected difficulty was in identifying finger images and determining their exact parameters. Any misdetection would result in unremoved finger images, incomplete removal, or erasure of content. These errors were mainly due to their unpredictability and the variations in the shadows that they cast. But we thought of a way to make things easier. Instead of having to deal with images of real fingers, flat page holders with a unique color or pattern could be used. The idea was to make them easily identifiable and not cast any shadows on pages. However, these holders made it extremely cumbersome and clumsy to alternatively flip and set pages. Furthermore, they couldn't effectively spread pages, especially for tightly bound books. Compared to the ease, speed, and effectiveness of directly using fingers, the idea of using page holders quickly lost its appeal. In the end, we fell back to the original plan. We revisited all the errors and imperfections and looked into every one of them. We continued to improve the algorithm and feeding it with more data. Despite countless failures, we were finally satisfied with the results after two years of persistent refinements. It was as though the scanner could see through fingers. Knowing how much it simplified personal book scanning, we are glad that we had not taken the easy way out. As with most devices with a camera, our initial prototype required that scans be initiated by pressing a space bar or a button. But that was a challenging feat while keeping book pages open. Without the use of hands, the obvious alternative has always been to try out the foot. So we tried using a makeshift foot pedal to trigger captures instead. Even though it felt okay for the first couple of minutes, repeated use for longer periods turned out to be painful, literally. Ankle and foot quickly got tired and sore, not unlike driving a car stuck in a long traffic jam. While further contemplating, other issues began popping up. Would the pedal slip or topple? Would it break under pressure? Were there situations where using it would be impossible or inconvenient? Could it easily fit into a laptop bag? All these worries would disappear if only the scanner could scan by itself. So we decided to look into that. It again involved intelligent software algorithms, and this time it was the ability to recognize open books. The first version was initially unreliable and slow. It either reacted too slowly or falsely triggered before pages were set. Then one day we took notice of what we initially thought was irrelevant. Whenever pages were ready for capture, something always happened. The user's hands stopped moving. So what we did was incorporate motion detection into the algorithm, and that did it. We created the world's fastest personal book capturing system. But what most fascinated us wasn't the speed, it was the feeling after scanning a complete book. 
For the first time, it didn't feel onerous. We were once told, if your idea is doable, someone would have done it. Had all inventors held that opinion, all things which made life easier would cease to exist. We had not expected many of the challenges we faced, nor were we confident to find the solutions. But to make something work for the first time, risks have to be taken. Fast, intuitive and carefree capturing. Pure content with no shadows, glare and coloration. Perfect sentences and paragraphs. We now know that every one of them is imperative for a real book scanner. and we incorporated all of them in the Scanex. Peaks.